Chris and Mary Rodwell, the mother and son. Their relationship is at a critical stage as a result of a deeply held belief that has torn the family apart and changed their lives forever. Mum started getting involved in some in interesting stuff about 20 years ago. And how old would I be? We had a family separation. My dad really wasn't into it at all. I don't like to think of Mum as a crackpot. It'd be really good if she could prove to me that she wasn't. Well, it's cost me um, certainly my marriage. And I think that it's, it's changed every belief I've ever had. She is now in danger of permanently damaging her relationship with her son. I'm, I'm soon told by Chris if he doesn't want to hear any more about it. He makes it quite clear. It is a large part of your life that I can't share. My desire is for him to just at least understand why this has become important to me. More than anything, I think that's just, um, would like some understanding of that. This belief is not about race, religion or sexuality. It's something quite different. It's so out there, it's so sort of wacky, you know. I mean, you know, people do a lot of crazy things and have lots of crazy experiences, but, I mean, this is literally off the planet, you know. <laughs> we're, we're sort of, you know, we're, we're dealing with a whole other sort of element there, and, and in the middle of it all is Mum. Mary Rodwell is one of the world's leading alien abduction counsellors. She's in demand all over the world and is constantly travelling, giving advice, lectures and public appearances. Well, I counsel and offer support to people who have interactions with non-human intelligences. Some people would say that's extraterrestrial beings. Her son Chris is a man of science. He works as a vet and empirical evidence rules his world. It's all good. I love science, you know, the, um, the method behind it. And, I mean, the problem really is that for the last 20 years, me and Mum have had this sort of conflict between us. I'm coming at it from one angle, she's coming at it from the other. She's really passionate about it, she believes. I don't. I believe these advanced intelligences have been visiting this planet since the dawn of time and I believe they're here to assist our evolution to another level now. The ultimate evidence would be seeing one of these little dudes walking around, little grey guy, you know. I somehow think it isn't going to happen. I'd love the opportunity to be proved wrong. Chris has given his mum a challenge. Prove to me that you're not crazy and that aliens exist or the subject is closed forever. So it's a really crucial point in my relationship with Mum. Um, I want her to convince me after all this time that she's not crazy, you know? Mary has grabbed the opportunity to prove her case with both hands. She has set up a schedule traversing Australia to immerse him in the alien community. And she is confident she'll be able to convert him into a believer. More than anything, it would be wonderful for my son to realise that this isn't mum just going on some airy-fairy kind of mission, you know, to make her life interesting in her latter years. But in fact, it's because it is so vital that everyone understands that this is... There are people hurting all over the planet that have nowhere to go, and I'm just one person that can actually offer that support. So I'd like my son to understand, more than anything, how important and, and why this is important and for him to understand the reality for himself because actually we're all involved in this. Chris is flying from his home in Melbourne to Gladstone in Queensland before driving to his mum's home and office in Agnes Waters. It's always been a source of conflict for me and mum or, or sort of, should I say, you know, sort of one of those things, you know, in families you don't you just don't um, go there, you know? It's kind of like at the Christmas, uh, the Christmas roast and things. You, you, you don't, certain subjects to be, you don't talk about. But we, and this is one of them, and I think it's because one of those things that there's a lot sort of bound up in it. Or a lot of this sort of stuff, you know, heralds back to mum and dad splitting up and, you know, sort of, I think there's been a, a sort of natural resentment of for me to kind of really want to go there. As well as the fact I find the, the subject, you know, quite sort of um, hard to sort of get my head around.
Chris has arrived at his first destination. His mum Mary's home and counselling rooms. All right, where are they? Oh, hello. Where are the oh, aliens? Gorgeous lad. How are you going, mum? Oh, Good to see you. Oh, good to see you too. You got the oh, pedal on? Oh, yeah. I'll the get that on. one in two minutes. All Do right. you want it now or in a minute? Um, well, no, well, I'll just dump my bag. If you want to. Yeah, I'd be lying to say there that I wasn't nervous. I mean, this lady has written books. She's, she tours all over the world yeah. and she's, she's been to places like Oxford University and debated high level academics and the president of the Skeptic Society. And she's beaten them. Got any freshly baked scones for me? Oh, yes, that and um, the whole banquet, my darling. You know what I do for you, don't you? All right. Eh? No worries. All right. Do you think that um, people out in the suburbs, you know, working in Woolies or holding down a job, raising their kids, what relevance is that to them? Do you think that, that you know, I mean, is it going to be, you know what I mean? Like, it might be, even if it's happening, yeah. let's, let's say it's yeah. happening, you know, what relevance is it to somebody, you know, that, you know, possibly there are people or things out there that are visiting planet Earth when they've got to put, you know, pay the mortgage? Do you reckon people care? I mean, really? Do you think they do? Or is it just a certain selection of people that care? I'll tell you the relevance because some of those people are having experience and encounters with these beings and they think they're going crazy. Housewives with children that are talking about going through walls. That's why it's relevant because they think they're going crazy and are, f are too afraid to even speak about it. My clients, you know, are, are people that, you know, paint your house. They're people that build your houses. They're farmers. They're young children. They're teachers. They're people that think they're crazy, are too afraid to even speak about it. And they're the people that come to me. So that's Mary is desperate to get on with presenting her case. And before they set off on the road trip, she has brought her first witness to her house to tell Chris his story. Greg Lenoll is ex-Navy. He claims to have been abducted by aliens and been on board a spacecraft. Today, Chris will get to witness a counselling session and hear Greg's account firsthand. Hey, Mary! Hey, Greg, good to see Dan. you. Oh, well, welcome, welcome. It's, I know it's a bit cold today. Mm. I've got the heater on downstairs and I've got someone I want you to meet. Sure. All right, okay. so we'll, um, we'll go down there and... Uh, well, Greg, this is my beautiful son, Christopher. Greg, I've known here now for the last year and he's had some really interesting experiences and I think I've questioned everything. I've also gone through a process that my clients have gone through because when they finally start to believe maybe they're not crazy and maybe this is real and if that's the case everything they've ever believed in has to be reappraised. It was about 1967. I'm seven years old, six and a half, seven years old, something like that. It's about 5.30 or something like six o'clock and to the south of us um, there was this what looked like a ball about this big in the sky. Kind of reddish colour, you know. And uh, as I'm looking at it I've said to my dad was there and I said, hey dad what's that? And he goes, I don't know. He says, maybe the Air Force have something like this. Well, as it, uh, within a few moments, this thing's got, just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, till finally it was like, well, it was right on the football field. It was huge. Like the football field, there was more of it going out past the main road. The red is now really strong. Also, the sun's starting to set a bit more, but the red color is really strong. And this craft, it's, uh, it was kind of an oval shape. There's a couple of hundred people underneath this thing and around it, looking at it. And um, then Dad says, it's time for dinner. Come on, boys, it's time for dinner. And I was like, but and it, time for dinner. <laughs> so we start heading in. What I, what I noticed then was that um, literally everyone turned at the same time. And instead of actually you know, like either running or something like that. They just all turned at the same time and very calmly walked back to their houses. I'm sort of lagging behind and I'm, I just really want to look at this thing because I've never seen anything like it, you know, and <laughs> it's like spitting out all this phosphorus, right? And it's like, hey, well, <laughs> it's really bright. And what it does, it, it comes over the top of you and it literally lifts you up. And what was really interesting is I didn't, remember going through any doors. 
right? It was like you were materialized or dematerialized or something. And then, so when I'm inside there, this, this craft is really big, like, you know, several stories high. Like, I'm not the only person who went on this craft, okay? There's, those kids didn't actually walk off. Okay, this is where we start getting, this is where we start getting a bit weird, mate. <laughs> it's all right. It's already been pretty weird, so. Okay, all right. It was a mixture of interest and kind of uh, what the, um, and um, trying to sort of go, is, you know, sorting out, you know, what seemed to be incredibly rational, credible descriptions from something that's like out of the movies. Um, very passionate kind of guy, and I think utterly convinced about what he saw or what he thinks he saw. But there is something in Greg's testimony that has Chris intrigued, and he can't dismiss it out of hand. You get hyper-fed information. I can have a conversation with an astrophysicist with no problem whatsoever. Yeah, I can understand physics, no problem whatsoever. I understand all of this stuff. Never, ever, ever did any of that. I was an F-grade student. I mean, he's describing to me about, you know, black hole, like high, high level astrophysics. Now, he seems to have more than just a brush stroke uh, idea of a lot of this stuff. You, you're, and you're positive you haven't dreamed any of this. This is kind of like, this is, you know. The biggest so, question I ever asked was, was this a dream? Yeah. More often than not, I've asked this. In fact, until I meet, met Mary and a few other people, wackos here like me, <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> I never really spoke this to anyone because it's just too out there, mate. You know, like, you know, like he's this fruitlet that thinks he gets picked up by spaceships and aliens. Greg is a very credible witness, and despite her reservations about their validity, Mary has arranged for Gavin Wilson, a polygraph tester for the federal police who trained with the FBI, to come and conduct a polygraph test with Greg in an attempt to give Chris the empirical evidence he craves. What I've been asked to test you on today is about um, your contact with UFOs or aliens and we want to find out whether you've definitely seen those, okay? Bit of science, Mum. You've got a bit of a you know, you've got a bit of a bugbear around science in general. So. No, I no, I, I haven't, not in the slightest. But I'll tell oh, you, you have, Mum, you have. Yeah. You do have. No, only when I think it's limited. In the last twenty years of your life, did you ever tell a serious lie to someone you loved? No. A lot is riding on the result of the polygraph test. I think he I think he's gonna pass the the lie detector test. I've got, I've got no doubt. I think we'll see that as a, as a, as a clear pass. Do you intend to deliberately lie to any test question? No. If we're talking about finally accepting on this planet that we're not alone in the universe, it's, it's bigger than anything else humanity can take on board. Just think about it. Finally, you know, we're not in top, at the top of the intelligence pyramid. Oh my God, how are we going to deal with that? And what does that mean about what we understand about ourselves and our history? Because they've been visiting us for a millennia. <clears throat> okay. Have you definitely been inside a UFO? Mary Rodwell believes aliens have been visiting this planet for centuries. She is an alien abduction counsellor and helps people to come to terms with their experiences with ETs. Greg Linole is Mary's first witness in her attempt to convince her son Chris that aliens exist. And Greg is currently undergoing a polygraph test. Have you definitely been inside a UFO? Yes. I think he's going to pass the the lie detector test. I think utterly convinced about what he saw or what he thinks he saw. Are you 100% certain you've seen a UFO? Yes. 
I've run a support group where someone's come in and they've nearly had a heart attack because the person they're seeing in front of them is someone they recognize and guess where they've recognized them they've recognized them from being on the craft okay Greg test is now over <clears throat> let's get the stuff off you Greg according to the polygraph these things have never happened. Oh, really? Yeah. So they are fantasy? Um, well, I don't know whether fantasy is the word that I would use. So what am I seeing in a regression? <laughs> well, we'll go into that. Yeah, we'll right, into okay. That. Yeah. There's a lot more work, you know, and, that, and that's it. Um, okay, so this is uh, my video diary for the first day. Greg, really interesting guy, lovely guy. Lovely guy. I think he's probably a little bit confused. I guess the, the problem with it was something which is measuring conscious kind of stuff or conscious memories and uh, his would seem to be if there's anything at all uh, there that it's not conscious. I think um, the, the whole scientific side of testing whether they tell the truth is very difficult actually for this particular experience because when you are in an altered state in other words a trance-like state it's almost like you know you're being drugged you know it's very hard then to know what's real it's day two and mary and chris are on their way to gosford where mary is to be the key speaker at a ufo convention the fallout from the polygraph test is still continuing but how do you expect then you know your regular joe blow yeah to kind of to be able to believe it if the people that are having the experiences don't believe it themselves. Well, that's what is hard because ultimately, you know, people have the, all these things going on. They've got no way of explaining it. So many of them think they're just going crazy. People can believe that they're Jesus. People can believe that they're, um, you know, that they're listening to, uh, you know, beings from um, another world. But whether or not it's actually happening is another, is a completely different yeah, yeah. Well, there are people that have actually seen them. This is the problem. But getting someone who's actually going to go and do a lie detector test to tell you they've seen them, most of them are whistleblowers. You just said you know? that there's that many. How many people in America yeah, do you believe? Yeah. So how hard I mean, is it to get somebody happy. that's going to pass a lie detector test or multiple lie detector tests about whether or not they've seen an alien? Well, some may very well be able to do that. But, you know, Greg was one of those that's still coming to terms with the possibility. With the evidence presented so far being discredited, Chris is now wondering whether his mother may be delusional. Oh, she's my mum. I love her to bits. I would like to think that nothing would come between us, but she's, she's a bit balmy. And she probably will get balmier too. You know, I've told her I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pick her up at some, at some point and she's gonna be, you know, wandering around the streets. But you know, I mean, I said to your mum, you're, you know, you're two steps away now. This isn't bad, is it? No, this will work out well. Hello, ladies. Nice to see you again. Right, well, we'll, um, where do you, we'll, where do you need we'll go, go up in front there. Okay. Looks like Hugh's up there, so we'll. Right. Hello, Hugh. How nice to see you. Today, Mary will be the guest of honour at the Gosford UFO Society. Chris will get to witness the high esteem in which Mary is held by the alien community. Well, good afternoon, everyone. What you're hearing there is something that seems to manifest after contact. And this is what I call evidence of, a, of an experience, because you don't start to come out with strange languages if it's just an hallucination. They often will have out-of-body experiences and have this experience of going through walls. Yes, you could say, are they sleepwalking? But you can't be outside with all the doors locked from the inside and sleepwalk. Some of them, I think, may be even inter interdimensional beings, and some of them may even be from our future. We just don't know. This is the trouble from whistleblower sources that I've spoken to. I said there might be at least 50 or 60 that the military actually know about and haven't been disclosed. But perhaps is many, many more. I think it's really important to remember that it's a journey and that
that it's a journey of joining the dots, even if the dots encompass the universe. Only on two occasions have I struck people who feel they've been abducted. Yes. Um, one was quite interesting that he uh, was abducted from about the age of three through to about the age of 14, when he then moved from England to Australia. And he said since then he's had no further contact. Now, how do they, do they follow them through their life if they remain in an area where he moved such a dramatic distance, mm. they seem to have lost contact? Is that normal or not? I don't think it matters where you are on the planet. If they've got your energetic imprint, if you like, they know where you are. It just may be that they've not needed to work with him at certain periods in his life. Yes. My question is, is that those um, uh, languages that were spoken, do they, those that spoke the language, do they know where they come from or who they are in relation to you? Because I've recognised one of you, those languages. You recognised one of the languages, did you? Do you have a sense of where it's from or how you know about this language on the I hit, the, I hit the wall, didn't want to hear about aliens, didn't want to talk about aliens, didn't want to listen uh, to aliens, alien language, look at alien symbols, talk about crop circles, talk about orbs, all the other stuff. That's just done with aliens. How many of you have actually seen a UFO? There's quite, a, I would say, what Joanne, how many? 50%? more. Um, it was nice to see him there listening uh, to my overall take on my work. I think he found it interesting um, to just not only see his mum, I suppose, doing her thing. He kind of just pushed the play button on mum and she just you know, she can talk for hours on this stuff. It's incredible. I mean, uh, and she doesn't seem to get tired at all. So that's 25, and that's 50, 75, 85, all that kind of stuff. And eventually, you know, hopefully, we actually see the, see the spacecraft at the end of it. And that's it's, 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 you know, it's just draining. I mean, um, I left home a long time ago, so we don't spend a lot of time yeah, together. Um, you know, she's got her life, I've got mine. And as we gradually start to come to terms with it, maybe we'll actually get them landing and saying, hi, I'm from wherever, or whatever. Okay. Hey, so we're all set to go are now. You, are you finished? Yes, I'm done. I'll speak tomorrow. It's day three, and the Rodwells have travelled to Canberra. The stress on their relationship is starting to become evident. Just like a UFO. Look at that. Just needs an engine now, doesn't it? One of those anti-gravity things. Are you ready to go? Chris is only interested in conventional science and wants empirical evidence, and his mum knows it. With this in mind, Mary has arranged a no-holds-barred public debate with an eminent astrophysicist in the prestigious Shine Dome owned by the Australian Academy of Science. There's my crazy old mother up there, you know, talking to people about aliens. <laughs> no, no, look, I'm, I'm sure, it look, it's gonna be really interesting to see you go head to head with um, the, uh, the men of science. Let's see what I can do tonight. Yeah. And hopefully you won't put me in the home afterwards. Well, I've, already got, I've already got the form signed, Mum. <laughs> Don't worry. Cut you away. Thank you, my darling son. So much, so nice to be loved. The topic for tonight's debate should the public be told that we are being visited by aliens and Mary is going to have her work cut out? Her opponent, Dr. Lineweaver, has been researching this topic for decades and he's on home turf. Many in the audience are his students. Welcome everyone uh, to what's being called the UFO debate. Some of what I might say could certainly be challenging to many of you because we still live in a consensus reality that says that aliens don't exist. Well, I hope that I can at least give you a little bit of an overview of why I believe they certainly do. 
gentleman came to me and he said, Mary, he said, I've heard you're open-minded. He said, there's no support groups for this. He said, I am considered a loony if I talk about it. And he said, and I've had contact with non-human intelligences, but not only myself, but my whole family. You get a whole range of people, housewives, small children, a little boy of five saying to his mum, I don't mind going through the walls and they teach me more on the ships than I learn at school. Where is this coming from? When you have somebody who says, oh, a child, for example, says, I saw a boogeyman. I saw something that scared me. You don't say the boogeyman is in there because that'll scare the child out of, out of their wits. And I don't think it's necessarily good to tell people who have seen aliens and been abducted and say, yes, you did see that. They do exist when you have what I would consider very flimsy evidence to support that. And I don't listen to people talk. I look at evidence and hard data. I will hope, Mary, that when you can tell your clients to bring a digital camera next time, because for 50 years we have been seeing very blurry black and white images of UFOs and spacecraft and photoshops, versions of them. Every time I see a, here's a UFO, here's a spacecraft, they're all blurry and out of focus. That is just inconsistent with the progress in technology and they're so easy to keep, put in your pocket and just carry it with you. Go to bed with it and when you wake up in a spacecraft, take a picture. And the fact that it's treated with such light-heartedness and often ridicule is half the problem. That's what I'm dealing with all the time. So this is part of the reason why you don't hear about it and there's the elephant in the room and nobody talks about it. So let's go to the next part of the cons um, what I would say to you. There are cartloads, absolutely cartloads now of images, people just taking pictures and, and having a UFO in them. People who don't believe in UFOs are actually seeing them. In focus. Um, absolutely in focus. When I met the ex-defense minister of Canada, uh, uh, the Honorable Paul Hellyer, he worked in the White House, privy to many, many secrets. He actually saw one of these alien beings in a, in a hangar. And he had alien technology from the Roswell crash that he had to slowly secrete out to corporations such as fiber optics, night vision, digital chips, Teflon, all come from reverse engineering of the craft. Thank you very much. So, so one question, did aliens invent Teflon? <laughs> Um, uh, look, I'm going from my research in 1600 cases in terms of their experiences on the craft and what they, they either tell me from conscious memory or they tell me through hypnosis. They describe, yes, genetic material is taken, but they're also taught um, quite amazing things from the origin of the species right through to quantum physics. But Einstein, was he visited by him? What do you think? The sort of expert physicist he sort of really, um, he really had a, a, a kind of quite a flippant attitude. And he said, "This is mathematics of the future." And this was Who is um, this guy? Um, a prof a Professor Brian Josephson. If my Brian mind Josephson, yes, 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 I know him. Was he the only one who said this? This was mathematics of the future because Brian Josephson is fallen into quite some disrepute. I was okay. at a conference at him with him about two years ago, and he's really gone off the deep end by most. Most right. scientists would okay. say that. So both I, of them said exactly the same thing. Mary. So maybe both of them have a problem. I'm maybe, Can I ask? I don't that? know. Well, we do have more than two mathematicians in the world. Well, I did shift, and it wasn't it wasn't a shift necessarily a quantum leap in in my belief of the subject or the um, yeah or UFOs or whatever it was just the fact that I think it was a pretty natural response that someone's attacking mum and I felt you know attacking my little old mum. Given the fact that we've just made these amazing discoveries where we've almost had to sort of uh, reinvent the way that we approach yes, physics yes, over yes, the last fundamental re-understandings of things. Absolutely. Yes. Is it entirely possible that you know we could do the same thing with a subject like extraterrestrials? Well, we would try, we'd love to be able to do that, but we need some evidence. <laughs> the essence of his argument was, show me the evidence, which is the essence of the whole argument. I mean, it's always going to be the essence of the argument, unless we can see tangible evidence. 
I'm going to put the proposition to you, and that is that we have been contacted by extraterrestrial life and we should tell the public that we are not alone. Can I see all of those in favour? It's a victory for the negative, ladies and gentlemen, but maybe it's a loss for humanity. <laughs> Whether or not you believe or you don't believe, you can't take away from the fact that, you know, she's, um, she's out there fighting a fight that she believes in. And I think there's a lot of respect about that. So, um, she did good, Mum. She did good. Chris and Mary Rodwell are attempting to resolve a 20-year-old family conflict by exploring Mary's beliefs together on a road trip. Uh, how you, how'd you sleep after last night? Um, well, I woke up in the night with it going through my mind, um, probably thinking of some of the better answers I could have get, given if I'd had time to think about them. So I was a bit frustrated. I thought, oh, I could have said that. Oh, I could have said that. But you can always do that in retrospect, can't you? I think you did all. You did all right, Mum. Thank you. I mean, I'd, I'd really sort of like to know where you are with things now in terms of, you know, looking at this looking phenomenon. Looking like crazy old alien mother. Yeah, yeah, if you like, <laughs> you know. Um, oh, look, I, I'm still... Look, I did, Mum, to be honest, yeah. there's nothing I've really seen over the last couple of days that has has made me sort of change the way that I look at the subject. I still am... I haven't seen anything that's really kind of blown my socks off. Um, I think you presented really well. You know, Mum was under attack. Here's Mum doing her thing, and who's this guy to, um, to treat her like she's an idiot? Clearly you... You believe or you are passionate enough to go out there and face ridicule on a daily basis. And for that, I think you're very brave. And for that, I was really proud of you. And I was. It was like, good on Mum. She's up, up there, no matter what you think of her, and she's hammering it out with some professor of astrophysics at ANU. And for that, you know, I take my hat off to you. Whether or not I'm, I've sort of softened my view on the subject, probably not. Okay. Well, when we get to Sydney, I've got something lined up. I'm sure that... you have. I'm sure you, I, would, I would have anything um, other than Which, that. again, may just add to that more empirical hard evidence that you're looking for. So I think that's going to intrigue you. Okay? Well, you're just going just gonna to leave me hanging like I think, that, are you? Uh, well, you're going to have to wait and see then, aren't you? If you're full of surprises, oh, mother. I know, I know. Full of surprises, you keep me guessing all the time. Yeah, that's Top number, sort of, You know? <laughs> Ducking and diving all over the place. Mary's confidence is growing and she is about to play her ace card. Her quest to show Chris scientific evidence now takes the Rodwells to a Sydney suburb. But before they get there, Mary wants to address the issue of photographic evidence. taken from a bed and breakfast in England near the crop circles by Silbury Hill. It's quite cool. Here's another one. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Oh. I can't. 
say what that, that it doesn't look like anything that I've seen before. There's another, oh my god, that's not fireworks, mate. No, I don't think it is either. That's really quite cool. I mean, I, I you know, you know what military I'm... satellites, but I mean, I can't, it, it doesn't, I don't know. Well, when that um, astrophysicist last night said, you know, little dots and what have it, he's not seen what's available. Well, why didn't you, you know? show this last night? Because I didn't have time to show this. If I'd had... I'd have the... started with this. <laughs> Start your talk with that. Yeah, well, I, you know, <laughs> and so I didn't what is have... that? What is that yeah. prof? Yeah. And see what he, what, he, what he says, you know? Put it back on him. Yeah. Right. Well, I didn't have time. Ten minutes. Because I can't is... explain it. It'd be interesting to know what... what how he could explain it. Um, I was able to show him some footage from a woman who for 40 minutes filmed these anomalous lights and they really are quite clear. And um, it was interesting seeing Chris's reaction to that for the first time I felt. He'd actually shown some animation around this. Immediately I was hooked in. I was kind of like, shit, okay, this is a bit different. This is not you know, fuzzy picture, this is quite clear. I'm seeing something with my own eyes that I can't explain. So I'm kind of, I was sort of, yeah, and I was, ex I don't know, I think it was a weird mixture of kind of excitement and oh, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe mum's got me on this one. So that's today, a good day. And um, tomorrow uh, is going to be another interesting one for Chris, I suspect, because um, we're going to take him to meet a gentleman that's had a very interesting experience with these beings, one that left some, I believe, very tangible evidence. How convincing that will be for Chris, we'll just have to wait and see. Why is it? You alright? Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to get down. I haven't got as long legs as you. Hello. Hello, Peter. Right, Long time no see. Yeah. Great to see hey, you again. Oh, I've been good. Good to see you. Oh, haven't you? Oh, been a while. Good. It's day five, and Mary has arranged to introduce Chris to Peter Curry. Peter is a security guard and a devoted family man with a remarkable story to tell about an alien encounter that he claims left him with the Holy Grail. DNA evidence. No, what, what happened in 1992 was um, something you don't expect. And I've never had an experience or heard of experiences that have happened during the day. And this is 7.15 in the morning. I'm lying there and I feel like something jumped on the bed like a cat. As I sit up, I see sitting straddling me a naked blonde female and sitting on the corner of the bed. So say I'm lying here on the bed. She's straddling me there, and right on the corner here is another female. The one that was sitting on top of me was um, blonde, very milky white skin, very, very attractive, but at the same time, a longer face, a long nose, but it wasn't a big nose again. It was just like it, it fitted their features very well. Larger eyes, very well proportioned, <laughs> I mean, I've got to say. and. Um, I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? How did, you know, how did you get in here? And um, as I'm thinking this, I sit up. And as I sit up, she's cupped my, the back of my head with both her hands and pulled me to her breast, left breast, and pushed my face into it. My defense mechanism, whatever you want to call it, and it's so out of thing with me, I took an, a little bite, a nip, and I felt flesh, you know, in my mouth. I didn't taste blood or anything, but I felt this bit of flesh in my mouth. I thought it was a bit of a nipple, maybe. And as it hit the back of my throat, I just, it was like you poured acid down the back of my throat, just this really bad chemical reaction. I started coughing, very heavy coughing. And as I've looked down and coughed, I've looked up and I saw them looking at each other and I picked up what they were saying. They weren't speaking, but it was telepathic communication. Again, it was, 
he's done this wrong, something's gone wrong, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, he's done this wrong. And I'm like, what the heck, what are, what are you going on about? I could pick on, I could hear it. I had an erection for like six hours afterwards and it was pretty painful. And under my foreskin I found two hairs. Um, one was like an S shape, almost curled, and the other one was sort of not, it was just wrapped around, um, embedded in though, like if you push your nail into you, you get a little bit of a mark. That's what they were, they were embedded. I could see that they, were, they weren't on the surface. And as I tried to take them off, peel them off, it was total agony. And uh, so I knew it had to be from them. Peter released his sample for DNA analysis, which was conducted by a biochemist. The results that came back were extremely unusual. And mate, I was bombarded with phone calls from the scientists come to our house, took hair samples from me, hair samples from Vivian, blood from me. So it was starting to get like a forensic investigation. What they found was... The analysis confirmed the hair came from someone who was biologically close to normal human genetics, but of an unusual racial type, a rare Chinese mongoloid type, one of the rarest human lineages known that lies further from the human mainstream than any other except for African pygmies and Aborigines. There was a strange anomaly of it being blonde to clear instead of black, as it would be expected from the Asian type mitochondrial DNA. The study concluded the most probable donor, therefore must be, as Curie claims, a tall blonde female who uh, does not need much color in her hair or skin as a form of protection against the sun, perhaps because she doesn't require it. Peter, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mary. You know, we're always here for each other. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. That's right. Always. Yeah. No, you did some good work. Thank you. Yeah, I thank appreciate you. it. He was a very, very believable, credible guy that works on construction sites and has now, you know, dedicated a large part of his life to kind of, uh, to telling his story. Do I think he's doing it for any kind of reason other than the fact that he feels compelled to do it? No, I don't. Yeah. How about we get together? Yeah. When you get so many people coming to you, ultimately from doctors, lawyers, nurses, um, social workers, farmers, housewives, small children, all relaying similar patterns of experience, then you have to say, what's going on? You know, are they all crazy? Or is this in fact a real experience? Chris has decided he needs to talk to Peter Curry again. Hello? Hello? Hello, Peter? Speaking. G'day, it's Chris Rodwell. How you going? Your account yesterday was was pretty mind-blowing and, and, and quite, um, quite detailed. Um, look, I was wondering whether or not uh, you would be prepared to, to undergo a polygraph test. Oh, not a problem. I've always requested it, mate. I've, I even, uh, at one stage, um, I feel there was some talk of some truth serum that was uh, being used in some military stuff, but I said, mate, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. Okay, gr great. Cheers, Pete. Cheers, sir. Bye. Bye, mate. It makes it much more believable to me, the fact he was so eager to do the polygraph test. I mean, how, how can it not? There's a guy saying, without a hesitation, without a shadow of a doubt, yep, I'll do it. What, what can you, you go, okay, well, right, right, right. That wasn't, I was expecting even a port, like a, a thought. No, nah, do it. So here we are. Paul, so I better make sure I port this time. The polygraph test will take a day to organise. In the meantime, Mary has arranged to take Chris to meet Dr. Rugbeer Bartel, an astrophysicist at the University of Western Sydney one of only three people in the world whose job it is to scan the sky for laser communications from aliens. We have a target list of stars that we want to look at and uh, then we use specialised equipment here which is uh, very sensitive to pulses of uh, laser beams. 
it has to be a nanosecond pulse for us to pick it up. And that information is fed into this computer. If we have extraterrestrials out there, uh, they, if they are there, they'd be more advanced than us, you know, and therefore radio technology or radio wave technology uh, will be uh, all head to them. Mm. So they will be sending information to us on, on a laser beam. So this is a signal, it's hidden inside here, this is all noise. And uh, I have a special program then, which analyzes this to find out whether there is actually uh, a signal inside. So it just takes the noise away? It takes the noise away. What you do is subtract the noise. If there is something there, it, it will show up. In December 2008, Dr. Bartel picked up a suspiciously sharp laser-like signal. This type of signal has never been seen before and Dr. Bartel believes it could be contact from an extraterrestrial being. Two years ago, oh, we found this. A very sharp spike hidden inside the noise. So we were quite excited with, with this. My written here is it E.T., you know. But the thing is, uh, I need to get someone else to independently find the signal again, is it? Could I ask, though, is it possible that if it was an extraterrestrial signal, that they actually may be in something moving, like a craft or whatever, and that you got the signal from there, and they've actually gone to another part of the galaxy, for example, and you're just not targeting the right part of the galaxy? Uh, that may be possible. possible? Uh, that may be possible. How many times would you need to see that signal repeatable for you to start to go that statistically? Oh, or maybe once or twice. Uh, no, maybe another few times. You get another few of those spikes, you might be dancing around on the rooftop. Yes, uh, I have uh, actually a uh, bottle of champagne to yeah. check, <laughs> if I find it. <laughs> Science needs empirical proof, which means seeing, touching a spacecraft or seeing a being, I suspect, coming through the door. We have this empirical evidence. It is so frustrating for me when I know there are people that know the truth and yet can't say because of Official Secrets Act because they're threatened otherwise. And I know the conspiratorial side doesn't rub well with Chris, but whether we like it or not, these are credible people that have spoken to me. They've got no reason to lie. It's the final day of the road trip, and the Rodwells have to wait until the evening for Gavin Wilson to fly in from Adelaide to conduct a polygraph test on Peter Curry. Whilst the polygraph test is conducted, the room must be cleared. So Mary and Chris have to wait outside until Gavin is finished. It's going to be fascinating. He wants to get an answer and he really is, is very interested in, in doing it. So that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be a fitting finale, I think, really. If he passes that, what can you say? Yeah. These things, they just record how you're going to breathe yeah. during the test. So just raise your arms up again. This one's going to go up and round your thoracic area. Mm -hmm. All right, just drop your arms down. Yeah. Those sensors on your fingertips, they record perspiration. All right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. If you're feeling faint, if you're feeling uneasy, queasy, whatever, yeah, let, let us know if you do. Yeah. Relax. Uh, okay, Peter, the test is about to begin. I'm now going to get you to close your eyes for me. Keep your feet flat on the floor. Don't move and answer each test question truthfully. Is today Wednesday? Yes. Is your first name Peter? Yes. Do you intend to deliberately lie to any test question? No. In July 1988, did you definitely witness five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hurlston Park? Yes. Did you lie to me when you said you definitely witnessed five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hurlston Park? No. Is honesty more important to you than loyalty? Yes. Did you deliberately do anything to try and beat this test? No. Did you lie to me when you said you definitely witnessed five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hurlston Park? No. Uh, 
Okay, the test is now over. Just Chris, Mary, I suppose you're going to know what the results were. Um, Peter uh, passed the test. Great. I'm happy. So, as far as I'm concerned, what he witnessed, there has to be some merit in that. The polygraph test has validated Peter's account of the events and reinforced his belief that the scientific community need to take this matter seriously. Look, I think the DNA went a long way to helping people believe. Um, hopefully with a polygraph to back it, people can then sit back and say, well, if the guy's not lying, there's got to be something there, you know? And if there's something there, and if it's 5% of all the reports around the world, if 5% of those reports are legitimate, and mine is part of that, then geez, we've got a phenomena we need to look at. I mean, the results actually haven't surprised me because I've always believed Peter and I know that he's got absolutely nothing to gain by saying something so incredible. Chris. Yeah, yeah. What's your reaction? Oh, look, um, what's my reaction? I mean, uh, I can't sort of sit here and say, look, here's a guy who's put himself on the line. He's told a very amazing story, um, sat a polygraph test, passed a polygraph test, and say, like, uh, you know, I still, I'm, I'm, I, I can't, there's got to be some other explanation. So in that sense, yeah, obviously, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm open-minded enough with, with Pete's story. Does that mean that I, you know, I mean, does that mean that, you know, I'm a convert? Chris, if anything, he's, uh, th though he's, you know, he's um, got a healthy scepticism, he's also very open-minded. And I think that with what we've just seen tonight, I think that's definitely got to make some difference in terms of how he views this. It was an amazing day to, to cap off an amazing kind of time. Um, and, you know, I guess... I guess I keep coming back to the fact that, you know, the only, after having looked at everything, the only certainty is that there's still uncertainty. And the more questions you ask, the more you find. And it just, it just keeps going around in this sort of circle. I mean, there's a little thing where you go, oh yeah, I, I can kind of see that. Um, and I can understand that, and that seems real. Um, you know, the two, the, the most credible parts of this whole investigation really have been the lights that Mum showed me. Can't explain those still. And a guy who says he's been abducted by aliens that's passed a polygraph test. You can't deny that. You ca I can't deny that, you know, and I have to take that on board. You know, ha has it swayed me? Yeah, yeah, it swayed me, but it doesn't mean that I'm a believer. Um, I'm not going to go yelling from the rooftops that I think we're being visited by aliens and that UFOs exist. Um, yeah, but, you know, you you got to... You've got to say, well, I don't know. Hello, my darling. Hello, are you ready to go? I'm all ready to go. All right, let's go. Time to go home now, hey? It is. Okay. I'm this one in. All right. Ten yeah, days yes. is a very short time to show what I've been learning about for the last 15 years, and I know it's been very confronting for him. I don't push this subject down my children's throats, who would? But I did sense that through that, I think the most compelling thing I, I got from what I saw of Chris was he was very moved by some of the stories, you know, from people who've talked about their experiences. I think that has moved him. I suppose in the, in the end, though, what I have seen and what's been just as important to me as investigating the subject is, you know, seeing mum seeing mum work and seeing mum tick um, and it comes full circle to the fact that you know mum is is a you know 
she's remarkable in that sense that you know she uh, she's always been a helper and people love her for that and I love her for that because I think it takes remarkable courage to do what she's doing. Chat live with Mary and Chris Rodwell at sbs.com.au slash documentary.